Okay, longish game here. And here we just want to look at um, utilizing the concepts as best possible. One of the key things for me is about, it's not about vomiting all of your information in one go onto the chessboard that you're playing currently. It's really about managing the selection of the correct tool, the correct movement at that time. So keep everything in the back of your head, deep, deep, deep in the back of your head, in your subconscious. And at any given moment right now, the next move I make, I've got to pull the right tool, the right movement, the right concept out. So I've got to get rid of all the negative ones and find a positive from my own experience. I can bring the bishop out, I can take the pawn. Take the pawn, I don't usually do this one, but I take it sometimes. And yep, so now, what's the negative impact of that? We do like practicing this. I've only had one person in many years actually take this pawn in this type of situation. They say, seem to want to push past, they're not interested. Oh, it's come with the knight. So if we capture the pawn, he can push his knight down, his pawn down. I'm going to capture the pawn, keeping it simple on that occasion. So it does have a discover check with his queen on our queen, so we can bring the bishop here to protect our queen if we wanted to do so. Because obviously the white square bishop is going to be taking this pawn here, so I don't think we've lost any tempo there. Keeping it simple, keeping it as real as possible, selecting the right movement out of all the stuff that we've learned. So before we go on castle, is there anything else? No, nope, I think castling is... If I was over the board, I would be chomping at the bit to get castle to get keep my king safe. These two here, I'm concerned that they're not developed, they're not doing anything. So I'm instantly wanting to get something done. I am wanting to bring the knight here, but doubling the pawns, I'm not too sure. The pawn here would work quite nicely, preventing his knight from jumping here. Or we could just bring this pawn to attack. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Can't be wrong. So there's nothing worse than your brain working too fast. And then you, you select a move that you think, oh yeah, 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 that, that one works. But still have to do your calculations. Just to make sure that it is the most appropriate move. I'm more worried when I'm playing online. Because people don't want to do long games you know so if it's somebody i don't know i know they don't want to do a long game so um that kind of puts pressure on me to make a move quickly which shouldn't be the case because i am playing a long game here but you find that they'll just resign because you know you're taking a long time so you're sort of putting pressure on yourself to think faster think quicker so then you throw out a move that shouldn't be the case and that's one key thing i would suggest to anybody try and avoid that sort of situation because it does spoil your game so we do have the option of taking the queen his rook takes and then his bishop his knight is on our um, bishop so we're going to have to do a few things bishop probably taking makes more sense to me because that gives a combination whereby they win out the rook is owned in this file and our bishop is under pressure where does it go i'd have to come to the back or i'd have to bring my rook here to defend and his rook is owning that file so that worked out quite nicely for us so next thing then we can take the queen or is there something better did worry about having my knight not developed so i could bring my knight out conscious his knight is probably going to come and block so then we lose the impetus of the queen exchanges is that something we want to do I think we take the queen first. We don't want to lose the queen exchange thing. Now we can bring the knight up. So if he brings his knight here, then at least we've got the rooks that can play. That's my thought process anyway. So it might feel like I'm working through it dead quickly. But from my own experience, it's calculation like this that helps you to get a better position. If we had done the earlier moves like left the knight here, not taking the queen off, I think we would have ended up jamming ourselves in and then our pieces wouldn't have anywhere to go. Now his bishops come across, so we can bring the rook here to challenge his rook. 
who wants to own this file does he take or does is it a standoff at least we've got the PC developed our dark square bishop is not good so probably bringing the rook here maybe bringing the bishop here nice slow fianchetto type situation you can feel this bishop getting pressurized the opponent's pieces are more open and they've got better positioning the bishops are targeting so we're trying to um jostle as best possible we have a weakness which is the dark square bishop will the opponent take the take that opportunity So they're putting some big four into it. We do have the knight blocker and that potentially helps us if he does take, but I still think he's going to be putting pressure onto us. So we do have the knight blocker to stop the um, exchange of the rooks for now, while we're also attacking this pawn here. And it would be nice if they took our knight, then at least our bishop is doing something positive. I don't think they will. I think they know that this bishop is in trouble and they're just going to keep this situation <clears throat> so this is a nice one to be talking through it's quite interesting opponent is probably up positionally in terms of their pieces but in terms of attack position I'll give myself a plus one so he's thinking about it do I take the knight no so we're gonna to have to put pressure on him he's gonna go back he does have this pawn here our knight can take the pawn he's giving us tempo probably push his pawn down onto the knight we can always come back here so it's about working the pieces together and I'm hoping fingers crossed he doesn't work his pieces together so we can take advantage of that because nobody's winning materially at the moment it's going for doubling up with the rooks does that lose him tempo knight can go here attack his rook but that's not going to work for us we can take the pawn like we said i'm going to take the pawn like we said because his rook doesn't have anything so he's probably going to bring his other rook he wants to own the file he knows the game yeah so he wants to own it <clears throat> we can take it's just we've got once this knight disappears then his rook is owning this bit this section here our knight is protecting this bishop at the minute so our knight could come here but then his knight is there <sighs> okay so it might be a move order thing rook takes let's say the rook takes could take with the bishop because he's attacking the knight Mm -hmm. I'm going to take with the rook I'm going to keep it simple get rid of the power base see what they do from there if the bishop takes then we can move the knight if the rook takes what do we do knight can then come and do a blocker here bishop takes what did we say so knight can still come and do the blocker anyway so we'll come and do the blocker but the, ooh what do we see his knight can then come and challenge but then if he does then our knight is then supporting the bishop so let's do the knight blocker so i'm happy they're not working together as a team at the minute it's all single type things which is hopefully fingers crossed putting us in good stead like i said this bishop is our weakness area i don't think he's taking this um, knight knight could come this side ah, he hasn't done it's going to pressure this bishop i don't really know what it's doing there it can't go back now so it can go to the side or it can take the knight it didn't look like it's interested in taking the knight i think they're probably going for this oh i've got the two bishops syndrome type thing so off they go probably coming to here try and control this diagonal I think the knight coming there probably would have been better wouldn't it because if we then took i'm not supporting this bishop mm, that would have been a bad one 
He's taken. Whoa, the bishop's in the game. The bishop is in the game. Such a terrible bishop. Now it's a really good bishop. Thank you. Yes, um, I don't think the opponent should have taken the knight. I thought they were going to keep that tension and keep my bishop weak. Uh, it's not saying we've won or anything. Now his knight's looking to do some sort of whirlwind and put a check on our king here if we move the bishop. Yeah, but we can take this pawn here while we're thinking about that because it's got no support there. So is this like the angry snowball thing now where, well, they've not made a mistake, but they've captured the knight with the bishop, which probably was an error in our eyes. And now they've lost a pawn. Is our bishop going to be... Ooh, we're getting trapped. We need to be careful. Just bring the bishop back here. It was released for a reason. Now we want to make it strong. Knight's blocking. Only thing that can contest that is the knight. Or the rook doing the um, sacrifice. Knight's looking for a space in. He's looking for a way in. It's not got one at the moment, which is good. Our knight's got a little gap here. If his rook wanted to come here, then we'd know the pattern. Ooh, he's blocking that way, so his rook is probably coming here. Yeah, his king's blocked the knight. Okay. So we could come here with our rook. What are we really doing there? Could push up. And keep pushing. What we're really doing there. Interesting. Okay. Let's open the rook. See what happens. Bishop coming down to attack. So yeah, this is a nice this is a nice game again. Um, one where we can talk through talk through the processes. <clears throat> we talk through the weaknesses of what we had and what the opponent could have done to really have um, put the thumb screws on us they seem to have released us a little bit but now we're trying to find ooh position that is nice and favorable knight can come here but what is it doing bishop can take rook takes with a check and then get these don't think he's going to do that I think what will happen is this rook will come here because our king is not next to our rook but what we could do is then, if he did do that, the knight could take this pawn with a check. Then we'd get his rook for free. Or maybe not. If we did a check, then he comes there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, got to talk it through. Yeah, he goes there, so that might not be as good. Ooh, almost there that was almost dark square bishop what can we make of this oh that's a lovely position bringing the bishop here stopping the rook from coming to this position let's do that yeah that's kind of key isn't it so now we could go here and he's attacking us anyway so we can go there but his bishop is still there on the slide so we've got to be careful so go in there or go in here go in here knight can't put a check on rook can't put a check on bishops guarding that square let's go here you know we could have actually gone there to get his rook off the board oh we've missed that opportunity no problems and he didn't have to take though because it's not a check on his king so no worries no worries don't want to be too eager and it's looking at what their knight is wanting to do oh no i've landed right in front of the knight <laughs> oh god I should have just put it right up there, shouldn't I? His knight's just going to take the rook. I've given him it for free. Oh, all that good work. That's a waste. Oh, shabby. Oh, and you know, the strangest things in chess do happen. And you've seen it right here. <laughs> 
Let's go with that, attacking the rook. Yeah, okay, you've got to watch where you're placing your pieces, but strange things happen in chess all the time. And it's being able to spot it. We gave our rook <laughs> to their knight and they didn't spot it. So they're feeling pressurized, which is good. Like we said, we don't, he doesn't need to take, but he does. So we'll take here. So it could be a draw, even though we're plus two at the moment. It could still be a draw because we've got opposite bishops. And he can come down here, put a check on our king now. So he probably could win some pawns. Probably look to push this pawn up onto the bishop. Hmm, makes for interesting development now. So let's play chess. This is the start of the game now. All the big guns have been taken off. This is chess. Use the logic of the game. Use the answer. There's no checkmate with this knight and bishop that I can see. So I'm not going to... Ah, he's blocked off the pawn pushing up here. So I'm going to bring this pawn here to just support the pawn pushing up onto the bishop. It gets funky when the opponent almost reads your thoughts. That's when you start thinking, oh, I can't believe this. They must be using some sort of tool to help them, blah, blah, blah. No, just relax and chill your brain and say to yourself, look, the person's under pressure. They're finding the best moves that they possibly can. It's time for you to find the best moves that you possibly can as well. Yeah, we said the knight was coming down. Um, what's the whirlwind? We come here, has he got another check on me? Go there. Is he trying to get a two on one on this? Comes back up. Let's attack it. It's not got anything supporting. And how, depending on how fast he makes his next move, it depend will show the um, calculation that they've done. And uh, taking a long time, so there was no major calculation. It was just going for a check on the king, because if he comes up here, he's gone back again. So he's on a white square, and we can continue with pushing onto the bishop. And then potentially we might have a poor majority on both sides of the board, which is hope, hopefully beneficial. But like I say, this could be a draw. You know, we've got the same piece, same minor pieces. If they use them correctly, they could have fashioned some type of draw. That's where Bishop can sit and protect this pawn now forever and a day. He'll want to get all these put onto white squares. So his Bishop supporting. Uh, right, my calculation goes a little bit like this. One. Feels like it's doing a nice job there though, you know. One. Two on one on this pawn. Pushes the pawn down. Can't go there because his knight is there. Two attacking the bishop. It's down, down. Bishop obviously moves. My next square is a white square, so he's probably just going to go here to stop the knight from dancing around. Push the pawn onto the bishop. That type of thing I can see happening. His knight is quite nicely centered in the middle of the board. So I have to be very careful where I'm placing my, my knight, especially because I'll give it away for free. So we don't have a poor majority anymore on this side. I thought I calculated that we'd get two here. So they've gone into deep, deep, deep think mode now. this is one of the areas that was key in my own development which is 
ending the game. Oh, we said that, so we can come here. But before we do that, was there anything else? There wasn't. Could attack his knight, but his knight can just jump away and get free. So I'm actually going to just attack the bishop. Like we said, bishop potentially going there, but then we'll just push here. And if that doesn't happen, then reframe what we're thinking. Utilize the pawn majority. I'm a bit loath to push these at the minute because of the knight being a little bit in the air, like we said, just push onto the bishop. So I'm like the worst enemy to this player at the minute because I'm, I feel like I'm predicting their maneuvers, which is annoying. And when that happens to me, I feel the same way. It's like, oh my God, you can't make a move. The guy's breathing on me. So now they've moved, they moved dead quick. So we can't even go there because the knight is in this lovely centered area. Mm. Could push. And if he pushes down, we can take. We've got a poor majority, so we can. Let's go with that. Don't really want to dance too much. Let's try and use the advantage potentially that we have. Bishop's still got a nice diagonal towards here. I don't think that's going to last too long. I think the king will come and attack the bishop. Oh, do you know what? I've made a mistake, haven't I? His bishop's on here. So if he takes, my knight can't very well go and take here. Can't go and take there because then I can't go there like that because his knight is protecting this square. Oh, shiver me timbers. I'm going to push this pawn. There's method in my madness. Okay, so let's just take here. I think anyway. Yeah, that was a bit overzealous. I should have um, done a sit down, have a cup of tea, relax. This knight is just a killer in the position that it's in. It's fantastic. So he's basically equalized now when we had an advantage. We do have a poor majority on this side, but he's got a poor majority. He's got a past pawn here with a killer knight that don't even have to move from this position, and this pawn can just ramp home. What have I done to the game? Eee, bye, go. Now he's got this, but just go here. Just try to block this um, point. So this is how advantages can disappear. Like I said, this is one of my weak areas um, for a long period of time. It's that, that finishing aspect, the end game aspect. You know, the when you've got equal pieces on the board and I had more pawns than the opponent, now look how equal it is. Like I said, I said, well, it could be a draw. Just because I've got these pawns, it could be a draw. I don't think I utilized them the best way. So even after analysis, depending on how the game ends up. So the bishop now is looking to control the diagonal coming across here. Okay, now I think my bishop's been here long enough. Could come and attack this pawn, his king drops down. I'm scared to move my king. Bishop up knight. Do, 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 do. I go like this. Go up. Hmm, I think I can go. No, I can't. That night is just too deadly. Right, got to do it right, got to do it right. Gonna move the king. Yeah, I'm 
just thinking if we got yeah okay so now it's still got this area so that's okay he obviously seen something because he moved there dead quick didn't he so let's go here we can't push down anymore so he's going to be stuck on a dark square and we have a dark square bishop it's just got his knight protecting so if we did a bit of jostling one two three it's three moves away it's a bit a lot it's a lot isn't it really but it's a plan a sketchy plan is better than no plan one his bishop's tromping at the bit to get round somehow yeah so it's come here so they can push down and push the pawn if we go one here then his knight comes and puts a check on us yes yeah, so if we go up his knight comes and puts a check on we'll come across puts a check on again so we're dancing around with the checks just take this bishop off the board okay so knight versus a fish let's go here this king is coming down we're going to wipe off all our pawns here they're on the dark square maybe the bishop can save if we can get to his knight in time let's go here it feels like it's looking more positive but he's going to come and defend it here but like we said the bishop can come here now but is it overworked does his king have time to come down grab this back pawn before the bishop can come and defend oh so we can come here after all let's go here the answer to chess not saying we've won but this feels very advantageous at the minute and it's the smallest of detail like i said we didn't play it the best at all we lost pawns left right and center <coughs> but positionally <coughs> um the latter part of the game shows that type of experience of appropriate positioning let's grab here Okay, don't need to rush it but it's uh, okay so it's on a white square and he wants to get across here so if we bring the king here blocking that has to access if he goes there he gets taken if he goes there he gets taken he goes there goes there he gets taken so we win the knight this king's not fast enough to come down for these pawns so potentially could be looking for a resignation here uh, yes I'm really pleased with that well not pleased with how we got here but well maybe I am pleased because at the end of the day I did say the pawns might disappear it's then how you jostle the pieces to actually get the advantage and again we've got the advantage in the game so yeah and they've resigned so I have to be pleased with the performance um, bit shady uh, and maybe I did I think I probably didn't need to lose the pawns and I needed to probably do something else and it's that something else that I'll need to look at when I'm doing my evaluation and my analysis um, as we're going through so that's how I will improve so I'll go back into this game and I'll look at um, what went wrong why did I release those pawns why did they take get advantage and we'll see how we go from there and this is how you keep developing all the time you're not going to have perfect games some you are yeah because you know you maybe you're catching the opponent by surprise or you're just on that day you're just absolutely awesome and other days you'll play games like these where it could have gone either way type situation and i'm happy either way um developing the chess as we're going through using the answer process